Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Daf Memzayin. We're two lines from the top. Says the Gemara. Omar of Zeira, Omar of Asi, Omar of Yechanan, Omar Rabbi Chanina. So if Zeira heard from Rabbi Asi, who heard from Rabbi Yechanan, who heard from Rabbi Chanina. So what did they hear? The following halacha. Omar Rabbi Reimus. Rabbi Reimus taught us the following halacha. Li hit Rabbi. Rabbi allowed me letaltel machta be'efra to be metaltel to handle to move around a machta. A pan which was used for burning incense, the effort, even though it contained its ashes. Now, at this point, the Gemara figures that these ashes were not designated from before Shabbos for any constructive purpose. And uh, therefore, these ashes are considered to be Mukta Machmas Gufay, they're utterly useless. And therefore, the Machta as well, which is serving as a basis, as a base, and as a support. For this mukta item, it too is considered to be mukta because it is bottle, it is subordinate to the mukta. Therefore, the Gemara wants to know how come Rebbe allowed him to handle this machta and why didn't he consider it to be mukta? Omalei Rav Zeir Ravasi. Rav Zeir was the one who heard the, the halacha from Ravasi. So he turned to Ravasi and he asked him, How can you tell me the neighbor of Yechanan that one can go ahead and move around this machta? It should be completely mukta. One can't can move it from its place because it is bottle. It is a basis to the afer, which is mukta machmas gufay. It is a utterly useless item. And the basis as well has the same category. Mi omar b'yoyichnan hachi. Is that so that b'yoyichnan taught us this is allowed? V'atran we learned in the Mishnah. Noi tel adam b'noi v'evan b'yadai. One could lift his child even though his son is holding a stone in his hand. Oy kalkala, or to move around a basket, but even besoicha, although it contains a stone, how is this allowed? V'chayra, these things are considered to be bosses l'davar asur. V'omar rabba b'rachana, Rav Yechanan. I'll tell you why. We're speaking about b'kalkala malaya peris eskinan, a basket full of fruit, and in this case, the fruit is considered to be the primary object in in this uh, in this uh, basket. Since it's definitely more valuable than the than the stone, if so, the basket is considered to be a bus al davar and we don't reckon with the stone. Now, what about the uh, the child with the stone in his hand? The Gemara there discusses this this question, and concludes that we're speaking about a child who has intense emotional um, uh, uh, t- intense emotional connection to his father, and he must pick him up, otherwise, the son will fall ill. So the Chacham allowed him to pick up his son, even though he's holding Mokta. Okay, but getting back to the basket, Rav Yechanan interpreted the Mishnah as being, as discussing, a case where the basket contains fruits. Time of this, Beperi. It's only because of this fact that the basket contains fruits. That's why the basket is not considered to be a, a basis of Davar Asr. Ha, less le Beperi, but otherwise, if there are no fruit present inside the basket, loy. Certainly one cannot handle this basket. It is a mukta item because it is but buses. It is serving as a base, as a support to the davar asr within it, and it is bottled to it. It too, it attains the, the, the status of the mukta item that is within it. If so, how could Yechana teach us that this machta is not considered to be a buses to the afer? It doesn't have the same mukta status as the afer, as the ashes. Says the Gemara, "Ishtoimim keshachada." So if Asi was was confounded for a moment, he thought it through, and then he responded as follows. V'amar he said, "Hochanami, this big carton." Obviously, we're speaking about that this machta, which contained the ashes, also contained uh, granules left over from the incense, and therefore, on account of those granules, on, on account of those carton. Which are not moksa, since they can still be used. They they uh, have a fragrant smell. They they can still be used, and therefore they are certainly more chash and more valuable than the ashes contained in the machta and the pan. And we don't consider the pan to be bottled to the ashes, rather to the item of higher value, which are the kratin, and therefore the machta as well is considered to be mutter. Now, although the machta is certainly a uh, considered to be a a klisha malachta iser. It is designated to be used for a malacha to burn incense on it, which is a malacha on Shabbos. 
Nevertheless, we know that even a klishim lacht and liisr can be used at tzarech gufa, at If one needs that chayfetz elsewhere for its own sake to use it for its own function, or he needs the, uh, the space, the location where this kli is sitting on, so he can move a kli. Shomalach the liisr kli that's designated for isr can move it for these purposes. However, in this case, where the afer is absolutely useless, it is more just than just isr. It is. It is muktzah uh, machmas gufay because it has no practical function on Shabbos. If so, the machta uh, should not theoretically be allowed to be moved at all on Shabbos. Even let's say you're gufay, let's say It should have the same din as the afer, which is muktzah machmas gufay, and cannot be handled whatsoever. Nevertheless, as the Gemara since there are remnants of these of these of this levaina of these granules of incense inside this machta. If so, this machta is considered to be a basis to the Dover HaMutter and uh, can be moved if we need uh, this Machta to use it uh, elsewhere for some reason or to, be u- to use the place where the Machta is standing on. Now it's interesting that the Gemara's Kasha here was that how could Rav Yechanan hold that, that this is Mutter? And Rashi explains this, we know that Rav Yechanan follows Shittas of Yehuda and Mokta. He adopts this broad approach of Mokta in accordance with Shittas of Yehuda. Therefore, the A first considered to be Mukta. Explains the Marsha. Why does Rashi need to focus on Rabbi Yehuda? Say, he would hold like Rabbi Shimon in Mukta. Nevertheless, this would still be a problem because the A first is utterly useless. It's not just designated for, for Malacha. It has no practical use on Shabbos. Unless it was designated before Shabbos to be used to cover with it waste. But otherwise, considered to be Mukta Machmas where even Rabbi Shimon agrees that it's Mukta. Explains the Marsha. There's a difference here. Because according to Rav Shimon, anything which isn't absolutely rejected from Shabbos use is still considered to be mutter. It's not mukta. Therefore, this afer, since theoretically it can be used to cover waste with it, it wouldn't have a din of mukta mach Therefore, the Gemara is conscious only because, it's only based on the fact that Rabbi Yoichnan adopted Shittas Rabbi Yehuda in mukta. And therefore, this afer, since its, its primary designation is not to be used to cover to cover. Um, Waste, it, 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 by and large, it's, it's useless. Therefore, it's considered to be Muktzah Machmas Kufa unless he specifically designates it, prepares it from before Shabbos to use it to cover waste. So, going to Yehuda, the default here is Muktzah unless he, he uh, undoes that, that default and designates it for Shabbos use. Therefore, the Gemara's Kasha is based on the fact that Rav Yechna concurs Rav Yehuda. If so, this Afer is considered to be completely Muktzah, Muktzah Machmas Kufa, and should prohibit. Moving around this machta for any reason, because the machta is a basis to the afer. So the Gemara concludes here that the reason why this is allowed, why Rebbe allowed Rebbe Reimus to be metal to this machta, because it contained those granules of, of levaina, Rashi says, those incense, which are, which are still suitable, which are still usable, lahariach to smell, Rashi says, and therefore, since they're more valuable than the afer contained in the machta, so we looked at the more valuable item and we determined the status of the buses based on the item of higher value. Now Tosis asked the Kasha, why was the Gemara basing its, its Kasha on Rav Yechanan's interpretation of the Mishnah, of the basket that contained the stone? We see from Rav Yechanan's words that if not for the fact that there were some fruits in there, the basket would be considered a bustle of our because it contains a stone in it. Says Taisis, we have a, a clear cut Mishnah later on, the Kufan Beis, which already teaches us this halacha. When there's money on top of a pillow, the pillow is mukta. Oh, when there's a stone on top of a barrel, the barrel is mukta. So we know the concept of buses of Dover Asa from a Mishnah. We didn't need to infer it from a, a halacha of Yechanan that implies to us that there's such a concept of buses of Dover Asa. Says Taisis, there's a difference here. Perhaps from the Mishnah, I wouldn't know to compare to this halacha of the Eifra and the Machta. Why? Because money, money, yeah, it's, it's, it's a double chashav, it's an it's a item of value. And therefore, perhaps that, sitting on another item, that endows that item, that base, that buses with a din mukta. Because it, it's, not, it's not bottle. The, uh, just the opposite, the buses is bottle to the mice. The same thing with regard to the Evan al Piachavis, as it says, we're speaking about perhaps a, a Evan which is used to close up the mouth of the Chavis. And the Chavis needs it. it, it the Chavis is Tzrichala. Therefore, perhaps over there, 
the stone is not bottled to the chavis. And quite the contrary, we say the chavis, the barrel is serving as a buses to the stone and it's considered to be bottled to the stone. So perhaps specifically in those cases, the money on account of its value, the stone on the chavis on account of its function, is considered to be prominent and important and therefore the item underneath it is muksa. It's considered to be secondary and buses to the muksa. But in our case where we merely have some ashes or a stone sitting in a basket, who says that will make the, uh, the buses into muksa? Therefore the Gemara brings a raya specifically from Rabbi Yechanan who told us yes, even a st- stone in a basket would render the basket muksa because it is a bustle of our usr, if not for the fact that there were fruit present in this basket which undo the effect of the stone and are mounted to the basket betiltal. Okay, so once again we had a kasha. How is this pan to be moved on Shabbos? Doesn't it have the muktza in it? The answer is, it also has the granules, the kroton, which are valuable, more valuable than the ashes. And therefore, the pan relates to them and is not considered to be muktza. Om Rabbi, how can you say that on account of these kroton, of these granules, the pan is not muktza? Now we're speaking about Rabbi Ronus, who was quoting Rabbi. Rabbi we know was a Nasi, was a foremost leader of Kali Yisrael, he was a, he's a wealthy man. And this, the Gemara assumes it took place in his house and the, the items belonged to him. It says the Gemara, Krat and granules, be Rabbi in the home of Rabbi, who was wealthy, mi chashivi. Do they, do they, are, they, are they considered to be valuable and items of, of, of significance, of importance? Certainly not so, and therefore, they can't determine the, the, the halacha of the machta. The machta who is holding the, the ashes is considered to be a bustus of davar also, regardless of the fact that there's some, some remnants of, of uh, incense in there which are not chashiv. And therefore, they can't outweigh the, the ashes. And certainly, we consider the machta to be a bustus to the ashes. It's only when the, the item of heter is more valuable than the item of iser, like in the case of the Paris and the Kalkala, in that case, they outweigh the stone. They're considered to be more chashev and of higher value, and therefore, they, they rule the day. We, we, we consider the buses based on the item of higher value. In this case, it says, Abay the Kratan HaChashev. They're insignificant. We don't reckon with them. And therefore, certainly the Machta relates to the Afer and is a buses of Dover Aser. Now apparently the Gemara is assuming that the owner is the one that determines. Because the point of buses, as Rashi explains, based on the concept of, the concept of bittel, the buses is serving the item above it. It's bottled to it, it's secondary to it. It's a tuffle, like a tuffle and ikr by, by brachis. So here too, it's a tuffle to the mukta which is considered to be ikr. Now who decides? Who decides what's the ikr? So the Gemara assumes that the owner is meant to decide. So if this incident took place in the house of Rebbe, even though it was actually Rebbe Reynus who was trying to uh, move around this machta, this halacha related to him, nevertheless, the owner is the one that determines the value. And if to Rebbe, who is a wealthy man, these granules are insignificant, he determines the value, he determines the halacha here. And therefore, the machta is considered to be mukta. As the Gemara will explain, perhaps you'll think, you'll say, that Although to, to Rebbe, it was insignificant, but since it is chazil anim, it is fit and usable, suitable for a poor man, we look at that, we determine the value of the item based on, on who's actually using it, who's actually handling it. We don't look at the owner. It says, well, we know that not, that not to be so. V'atani, we learned in the price. Big day anim laniyim. Begadim, which are suitable for poor people, there are small patches, Rashi says they're only three by three, it's boys, or they're made of um, a thick texture, so these are suitable only for Aniyim. Therefore, the Brisa tells us they only make Kabotuma for Aniyim. Big deal, la Aniyim, la Aniyim. However, a wealthy man, for him, these things have no carry, no chashivas, no significance, and therefore they're not make Tuma for him. Tosis explains this is specifically to Tumas Medrus, a specific Tuma for the, with the Azov sits on it, but other Tumas like um, like Tumas Mace, Tosis says, it would not it would not uh, depend on the fact that that it belongs to Ani or Asher. So in any case, at least with regard to Tumas Medrus, 
we do see this distinction that something which is suitable and meant for designated for ani will only be makabatuma for the ani. Again, says the Gemara, big de alniyim laniyim, big de ashir. But if there are large size materials, like Rashi says, the three by three tfachim, which are suitable to be used even for wealthy people, in that case is makabatuma even for ashirim as well. Avol says the Gemara, but the aniyim, those items which are designated for aniyim, la ashirim loy will not be makabatuma for the ashirim. So a small piece of material, like we mentioned or the thick texture which is not suitable for Ashirim will not be Makabotum for the Asher see here too says the Gemara the fact that the owner in this case Rebbe did not assign any significance any value to these granules they are not considered to be Chashev and therefore they cannot outweigh and overpower the, the ashes which are sitting in this Machta and the Machta should be considered to be a Basis Lodavar Asher to the ashes so you can't tell me that was the reason, because of the granules. That wouldn't work. Ella Amr Abayi. So Abayi says, okay, I'll give you another reason. Midi Dahava, Agraf Shalrei. The reason why he was allowed to use, move around this machta, it's based on the concept, on the halacha, of Graf Shalrei, this, this uh, container, which contains uh, Rei, which is, uh, which is uh, Tzoya, waste. So we know that the Ham allowed one to... We metalto the graft, this container of ray, since it's, it's repungent, it's repulsive. The chachamim made an exception with regard to the lachas of mukta. Although it is mukta machas gufa, it's it's useless and it's mukta. The chacham allowed one to handle it to get it out of the way on account of its mius. Here too says Abaye, this machta which contains these ashes, it's moist, it's repungent, and therefore for that reason he was allowed to move it. Oh rava, stay true as bedaver. I have two two reasons to challenge this teretz. Number one, Chado, Graf Shalrei Mois. The Graf Shalrei, it's Mois, it's repungent. Violent Mois. This Machta is it's not Mois, just because it has some ashes, big deal. That wouldn't be a reason to allow it to be moved. Vo'oid. Another reason, Graf Shalrei Migli. That vessel, that container of, of Rei of Tsoya, is Migli, it's, it's open and revealed, and poses a, 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 a uh, repulsiveness, it's, it's, it's repungent because it's visible. By Mixi, but this case of the Machta, it had a lid, it had a perforated lid, and therefore the afer was covered. And it's not considered to be most, that wouldn't be a reason to allow it to be moved. El Omarava, let me propose, let me suggest a reason why Rebbe allowed Rebbe Rognus to be metal to this macht. I'll give you an answer based on the following incident. El Omarava, ki avinon be Rav Nachman, when we were by Rav Nachman, we would do the following. Have a metaltilalinon kanuna agav kitma. We would be metaltil this kanuna, is some type of other type of pan, which is used to to um, burn uh, coals on it for for uh, warmth. So we would be metaltil this pan, this this uh, sort of shovel, agav kitma, even though it had the the ashes in it. As Rashi explains, agav kitma means not despite its ashes, but because of its ashes, meaning that these, these, these ashes were already prepared from before Shabbos and were designated to be used on Shabbos to cover it, with, to cover the roi, to cover waste with it. So therefore, these ashes were not considered to be muktzah at all. It was miyuchad, it was mezuman for Shimosh on Shabbos. Therefore, says Rava, that must be the reason for Rebbe allowing Rebbe Reynus to be metal to the machta. We're not speaking about afer that surfaced today, afer that wasn't prepared from before Shabbos. Rather, that afer was prepared before Shabbos. It was designated before Shabbos. His das was to use it on Shabbos. So once something was prepared before Shabbos for use on Shabbos, it doesn't have a status of mukta. And certainly there's no reason not to be metaltal. That machta with its afer. So up until now, we figured out the words of Rebbe Reynus who said, Li hita Rebbe, on the third line up on top, Li hita Rebbe, Lil taltal machta be'efra. We figured it was despite. He allowed me to be taltal the machta, despite the fact that it contained some Eva, which is muktzah. And that was a pella, that was a wonder. We wanted to know what the pshan that was. Now the terrace is different. The, the, the interpretation of those words mean as follows. Li hita Rebbe, Lil taltal. He allowed me to be taltal machta be'efra. For the sake of its Eva. Because this afer was designated to be used on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, okay, if so, what's the Chiddush here? 
So the machta is certainly not muktza because it has the afer in it. And the afer was designated to be used for a, for a shimosh heter. So why can't it be metaltal, the machta, to go ahead and, and, uh, and use it to pour the afer? Perhaps the machta is, is itself would be muktza because it is a klishal malachta l'isr. It's meant to be used to, to, for burning, which is a malacha. But in this case, when he's using it, when he's, when he's picking up the machta, the pan, in order to transfer the afer and to use it to cover something with it, why can he do that? What is the chiddush here? Says the Gemara, "Va'afagav the ikalei ashiver eitzim." So, this is actually the conclusion of Rava's incident. He says, "When we will by Rav Nachman, he will allow us to carry this pan with the, with the for the sake of its ashes, even though it contained on it shiver eitzim pieces of, of splinters of wood, chips of wood, which are muksa. Nevertheless, since they weren't as valuable as the afer inside, therefore the machta." or this kanuna, this vessel, was not considered to be moktzah. So here too, in our case, once again we're speaking about Eifah which was designated before Shabbos, so even though perhaps there's some splinters of wood there which are moktzah, one is allowed to be metal to the macht on account of its Eifah. Continues the Gemara Meisve. How can you say that it can carry this, uh, this kli, despite the fact that it has some uh, wood chips on it, vishavan, the Brayse tells us that they're both equal. They all agree. It's referring back to Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, who have a machlekes between them regarding a metaltel, a ner, a lamp, and according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's muktza. According to Rabbi Shimon, it's not muktza. They both agree. Shim yesh ba shivri psila. If it has remnants of of wicks, Rashi says the psila shall pishton some flax wicks. So it's oselatal. Why? Because these shivri psila, these broken wicks, are not. Are not uh, are considered to be items of muktza, and uh, therefore, even though within the lamp there's also oil, we see that it doesn't matter. The fact that there's some muktza item there that renders the lamp to be muktza, it considers it to be muktza, since it is serving as a base, as a basis for the shiver psil. Here too says the Gemara, even though in this machta there's afer and. Uh, the afer is not muktza. Nevertheless, since there's some uh, shivri eats in there, there's some small pieces of, of wood there. The machta should be muktza on account of them. Says Zimra Amr Abaye, I'll tell you the reason why. When it has a shivri psila, it's muktza. We're speaking about a unique case. Begalila Shana. We're speaking about in the area of Gol of Eretz Yisrael. As Rashi explained, explains the uh, begadim shall pish on the, the flax, the linen, clothes, the uh, material is very scarce they are hard to find therefore it's considered to be uh, valuable and um, even though there's some oil in this in this lamp together with the shiver psila we consider the shiver psila to be more valuable than the oil and therefore the Allah of buses is dependent on the item of higher value in this case the shiver psila are considered to be more valuable and therefore the nair is serving as a buses to them and as muktza however in our case when we have the, the afer, the ashes in the machta, although there's some wood chips present, the wood chips are not more valuable than the afer. Just the opposite, the afer is more valuable. And therefore the machta is considered to be a buses to the double heter and may be moved on Shabbos. So in, co- in conclusion, we had a halacha that one can be metal to the machta when it has afer inside. The Gemara was trying to understand what is the basis of this heter. It seems that the afer is muktza and the machta as well should be muktza. So the Gemara had three approaches. We began with Abai, who told us that evidently we're speaking about there are some krot in there, some granules of incense, and on account of those valuable krot, which are more valuable than the afer, the machta is considered to be a buses to them and not to the afer. The Gemara countered by saying, well, these krot in the home of Rebbe carry no significance, carry no value, and we don't reckon with them. So Abayi proposed that perhaps the reason why it can be metal to the smachta is because of the halacha of Graf Shorei, the Chacham allowed one to pick up this vessel containing the the, ray, the, sorry, the waste because of its, uh, its mius. And therefore even though it should be muktza, they allowed it here too. The machta is mos on account of its afer. Rabbi disagreed and he concluded that apparently we're speaking about afer which is not muktza at all because it was prepared from before Shabbos to be used for some type of shimosh on Shabbos, and therefore the machta, which contains this afer, can be moved in order to pour the afer. And the Gemara concluded that the chiddush here is 
that although there's some wood chips there, the wood chips are insignificant, are not considered to be as valuable as the afer. Quite the contrary, the afer outweighs them and carry the day and determine the halacha of the machta. Now we see the interesting point that the, the, the point of buses, the concept of buses is based on bittel, that it is considered to be secondary, tafel, subordinate to the item above it. And therefore we see that this concept is based, is determined by the owner. The owner decides because he is the one to, uh, to determine the, the value, the status of the buses. So if to him the item above it is chashev, is an item of value, then the, the buses underneath it is bottled to that item. He determines. And whether or not he's actually using it somebody else, the halacha depends on the owner. What value he assigns to these items. Second thing we see, that when we have two items sitting on a buses, what is the status of the buses? It depends on the item of higher value. Because once again, the point is to be mevatel the buses to the, to the object sitting above it. So it is only bottle to the object which is more valuable. Continues the Gemara. Levi bar Shmuel So there was a story that Levi bar Shmuel he encountered Rabbi Abba and Ulu Ravuna bar He encountered these two. They were standing by the doorstep of Ravuna. So he encountered them and he asked them Shail Halacha. Amarlu, what is the halacha in the following case? Maula Haksir, Mita Shal Tarsim Bishabis. So Tarsim are either coppersmiths or weavers, and they used to have this portable bed they used to carry with them and assemble it when they got to their uh, destination. Is one allowed to reassemble this Mita, which is comprised of sections of parts? Maula Haksir, can one reassemble this Mita Shal Tarsim Bishabis? Is it allowed or not? Amr Lays, they told him. Why not? Certainly, a sharper dummy, one certainly can go ahead and reassemble this bed. As Tracy explains, we're speaking about the, the sections which come together loosely. They're not really tightened, and therefore, it's not a problem. It's not considered to be a malachan Shabbos. So, this was the first part of the story. Continues the Gemara. So, Levi by Shmuel came, also he came, like Hamedur of Yehuda, and he asked him the same Shiloh Can one reassemble? This type of bed on Shabbos. Omar Sarvi Yudah exclaimed, he said as follows, Ho Rav Shmuel, Damir Tavayu, Rav Shmuel both say, Hamachser Mita Shotarsim B'Shabbos Chayv Chatas. If one was to reassemble this Mita Shotarsim on Shabbos, he actually Chayv Chatas. It's a full-fledged Malacha. Which Malacha? Explains Rashi. It's a Malacha of Maki Patish. This is a term used in the Gemara later. It's the final blow. It's referring to finishing up a utensil, finish, finishing up a, an item. And it's considered to be a malacha. So reassembling this bed is considered to be makiv patish. It is a malacha. Now, Taisus explains that this statement, this halacha of Rav Shmuel, that if one is machzer, the mita shatasim, is chayef chatas, is a malacha that rises. Evidently speaking about when he did it, when he assembled the parts very tight, he, he fitted them together tightly. Indeed, in that case, he's chayef chatas. But in a case where it's merely roughly the, the, uh, Parts, the, the sections are merely fitted together loosely. Certainly, in that case, it's not really a melacha de rice, it's not chayv chatas. So, why did he compare the two things? How did um, Rabbi Yehuda compare the halacha of Rabbi Shmuel, or speaking about a tightly fitting, uh, tightly fitting bed, and uh, our case, which is merely loosely fitting? Tais explains that he meant to derive as follows. He says, Look, when you fit them tightly, he's chayv chatas, it's a melacha. So it's not plausible to say that when it's when it's loosely fitting, it will be mutal chatchila. It makes more sense that the chacham would not allow that either, on account of a, of, a, of a of a possibility that one might confuse the two. One, one might come and not just fit them loosely; it might go might go ahead and actually put them together tightly fitting, which is a which is a macha de raisa. So it's rational to say that the chacham would not allow would make exera even in the case when the sections are merely loose fitted together loosely. So if so, we must say that this case as well is also at least with the So once again, a quick recap. He had a shayla. What about this mita shatasim, which is uh, comprised of sections? Can one reassemble it on Shabbos in a loose manner? So the first shita was Rab Abba and Rav Huna Barchia. He said, "Sure, no problem. It's merely fitting together loosely. That's not a malach." 
Rabbi Yudah says, well, it must be at least us and the Rabbanon on account of the fact that were he to go ahead, were he to go ahead and, and fit them together li- uh, tightly, firmly, it would be a chiv chatas, would be a de rice. It certainly makes sense that roughly, if it's merely loose, it should at least be us and the Rabbanon. Continues the Gemara Meisve. We're going to ask a kash from a brisa on the Manda Amar who allows Hamachzer Kana Menor B'Shabbos. If one restores the branches of the candelabra on Shabbos, Chayiv Chatos. Why? Because when he puts back the branch into the candelabra, he's doing it in a, in a firm manner, fits tightly, and is considered to be a Malach. However, Kana Sayodin, this pole used by the plasterers, so they still have a pole made of sections which they would, uh, they would add to each other or subtract based on the distance on how far he has to go and, and uh, reach. So this Kana Sayodin, well, yeah, sir. He shouldn't go and assemble it. But the mixer potter will also. But if he does it, it's not a mocha de raisa. It's potter, although it's certainly also a midrabbanon. Why? Because apparently these sections are not fit together tightly, and it's not considered to be a mocha de raisa. Reb Simoy Oimer, there's a certain type of instrument called a keren agula, a round uh, horn. So this was a uh, perforated instrument, a wind instrument, which had some holes to place the, uh, the pipes of the instrument. So it depends what type of instrument. If it's a Karen Agula, a round horn, in that case the, the pipes which are inserted, the sound emitting pipes which are inserted, go in very firmly and tightly. Indeed, that's a Malach and Yitzchayif. Karen Pshuta, if it's just a straight Karen, in that case the, uh, the pipes that are inserted they go in loosely, they're loosely fitting pipes, and it's not considered to be a mlacha der he's potter. So you see clearly that even something which is loose fitting is a asamadra bonon. So how can we say that to reassemble this mita shatarsim is mutal chatchila, because he's doing it loosely? This price clearly tell us, tells us that even if it's loose, it is also at least mudra bonon. Says the word inu, they, meaning Rab Abba or Rapun Rachia, who allowed it in chatchila. They followed a different opinion. Inu the Omar Tana, their shita was based on the following Tana, which was Rav Shimon Gamliel, who indeed allows one to reassemble an item if he does it roughly, loosely. The Tana is related in the following price. Mal Samita, these sockets placed underneath the legs of the bed to prevent the, uh, the, the uh, molding or the, the, um, the, the uh, damaging of the, of the legs of the bed. So these sockets, which were placed underneath the legs, or karasamita, the actual legs of the bed of the bed themselves, levachem shall skivas, a certain type of um, wooden nut which was used in the bow and arrows, lo yachser. So one should not uh, put them back, assemble them. Vim yachser potter, but if he did so, he is potter. Avol os, it's potter. It's not considered to be a machad araisa, but certainly midrav bonon, he shouldn't do it. Perhaps he may come to actually do an Isidar Aisa. Velo Yitka. But he must make sure not to really fasten it tightly. As she says, through, uh, for instance, through uh, pegs, using pegs or nails. Because if he, were to do, if he was to do so, if he actually is Teikeya, he's actually fastening with, with, uh, with a Chayzik, with, with firmness, using, for instance, pegs or nails. Vim Toka Chayev Chatos. So this Brisa contends, that merely assembling items together is not a malacha de rice unless he actually is doing it bechoizik very firmly and fasten them together, for instance, using pegs or nails. This is Tanakam. Roshim Gamliel Oimer, Imhoi Mutar. If it's loosely fitting sections, he can even do it with the Apparently, the fact that he's allowing it to remain loose appears that he. He's not really concerned with the, with the uh, firmness and, and fastening it. There's no concern that will go ahead and drill nails into it, drill screws, and fasten it very tightly. So this, indeed, this shita, Shun Gamliel, forms the basis for the heter applied by Rabbi Abba and Vun Barchil. They maintained that this mita shotasim, this bed made of sections, can be reassembled if, in fact, he makes sure to do it in a way which it's loose, the sections are loosely fitting. In according to the Shittim Gamliel, of Shem Gamliel. Continues the Gemara. Bei Rav Chama. So on the home of Rav Chama, have a mita gal nisa. There was this portable bed. Have a mahadula. They would reassemble. Be yoyim atov on yamtiv. Amalei umer abbanan lurava. 
So one of the scholars challenged Rava, and some have the Gersh of Chama, he challenged Rav Chama. How can you allow this to take place in your home? My daitach, what, what are you thinking? What is, what is the, the heter? So he said, my daitach, what is your opinion to be mad to this? Why are you allowing it? Binyam and Atzadu? Because it's not the ordinary manner in which one builds, it's, it's being done roughly, loose, and therefore it's not considered to be a, uh, a malacha. Binyam and Atzadu? Although certainly it's not Isra de Raisa. Isra de Rabbanon, Mihika. However, the Rabbanon disallowed this. I'm concerned that he might go ahead and actually fasten it tightly and use screws or, or, or nails. Omar Lays, he told him, I know. Kyoshim Gamliel, Sviddly, I hold like Kyoshim Gamliel. Who says, the, the Omar, Imoyorofi Mutter. If these sections are loose, it's Mutter even in Chatchila. Therefore, I allow this to take place in my home. So in summary, we have a three-way machlekes here with regards to assembling an item on Shabbos. Now we have several types of assemblages. We have rafui, which means that the sections are merely loosely fitting. We have ene rafui, when they're firm, when they're tightly fitting, and we have tokobo chayzik, very tight. For instance, using pegs or nails. And we have a three-way machlekes here. The first price that tells us that even when the sections are merely fitting loosely together, it's rough, it's still awesome at the When they're fitted tightly together, any rough or tokuba chayzek, very tight, certainly that's considered to be a malocha and chayev chatas. In the second price, we have a machlokis, the Tanakama holds, that when it's either loose, rough, or even when they're tightly fitting, it's merely awesome at the Provided it's not to kobe they're not really very tightly fitted together. For instance, using pegs or nails. Only in that case is there a chayv chatas. Rishon Gamliel disagrees with the first halacha. He says if it's merely roughly loose, then it's muta even lechatchila. The Gemara concluded that Rav and Shmuel based their prohibition with regards to assembly the mita shel tarsiim. They based their iser on the first brisa, who holds that even when he assembles it in a loose manner, it's still awesome with the However, the other shita of Rabbi Abba and Rav Hunar Bachia, they base their heter on the opinion of Rav Shimon Gamliel, who maintains that assembling an item in a manner where these sections are merely loosely fitting roughly, it is moti even l'chatchil. Continues the Mishnah. One may place a kli under a lamp to deflect the, um, the sparks. However, you shouldn't place water into it. Why? Because it's extinguishing the flames, extinguishing the sparks that fall directly into the water. Says the Gemara, how can one place a kli under the nair to deflect the sparks? He's being mavatal, the use of the kli. He's nullifying the designation of the kli because these sparks are mokta. And when one, 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 one places the kli under these sparks, what happens to the kli? It becomes a bustus of davar asr. It is bottled to the sparks, and it too becomes mukta. And one cannot be mavatal, the use and designation of a kli on Shabbos. We learned this earlier. There are several reasons. On account of soiser, it appears as though he is, he is dismantling the kli, he is rendering it useless. Or on account of boina, it appears as though he is cementing the kli into place. He won't be able to move it any longer. So this is Isam Drabbanon. And one should not be able to do this on Shabbos. Omar of Hunabit of Yeshua. This is different. In our case, the kli doesn't become mukta at all. Needs so it's it's Ember Mamish. Sparks have no significance, have no, they have no value. And therefore, even when the sparks are present in the kli, the kli doesn't become mukta. And why is this? As we explained earlier, Rashi told us that the concept of Basis of Davar Asr is based on the Allah of Bittal, because the base, the support becomes bottle becomes nullified to the mukta item within it. In the case of an etzaitzis, they're not items of significance, they're no chashivas. So even though perhaps they themselves are mukta, but they don't make the kli a basis to them. The kli doesn't become bottle to something so insignificant as sparks. So, in conclusion, there's no concept of bitu kli meyachana here, because the kli remains mutta throughout. Continues the Gemara, V'le'yitin l'seichemayim, so the mission told us water cannot be placed in this kli because it's going to extinguish the sparks. Says the Gemara, extinguish? 
it, it's being done indirectly. It's a gram. It's not direct kibui. He's not, he's not being machaba directly. He's placing water and eventually the sparks will become extinguished on their own. It's merely a gram kibui. He's doing it indirectly. Is that too awesome? Lema, you're going to say stnan, stomach of Yosef. This Mishnah, this stam Mishnah, this anonymous Mishnah is, is based on Rav Yosef Shita. Reflects Rav Yosef's opinion who says, the Omar Gurim the Kibi Osir, one cannot even indirectly cause Kibi of a flame. This is a Machlech, uh, discussed later in the Masechta. That if there's a Dleka, there's a fire there and he wants to protect, prevent it from spreading, according to Rav Yosi, one may not place water um, inside uh, new earthenware kalim, which are liable to crack and burst when the flame gets to them. So you can't place them around the flame because even Guram Kibi is also. Is this mission reflecting that Shita and not the Shita's Rabbanon who allowed that to happen? Says the Tisbra, can you even propose? Does that make sense? That our Mishnah reflects or raises Shita? That, that doesn't even work. Why? Because any Madom Rav Yosef is Shabbos. Rav Yosef's halacha is only with regard to Shabbos itself. One cannot place those Kalim there on Shabbos itself because he's doing Garam Kibbut. However, in our Mishnah, which is discussing Arab Shabbos, that certainly would be Mut even called Rav Yosef. Rav Shabbos me Amar. Does Rav Yosef then state his Isra even on Arab Shabbos? So you can't even say that our Mishnah is following Rav Yosef. Even according to Rav Yosef, this would be Mut. Perhaps you'll say that Amish is discussing Shabbos itself and not Erev Shabbos, and indeed it's reflecting Yesus Shita. But Atani, we learned in the Brisa, Nois and Kli Tachas Haner Lekabon Itzos B'Shabbos. One may place a Kli under the Ner to be Makabel the sparks on Shabbos itself. He can do that. Vein Tzur Chleim of Erev Shabbos, and needless to say, on Erev Shabbos, certainly you can do it on Erev Shabbos. That's with regard to an empty Kli. However, Valit and Lusei Chemayim, but he shouldn't place water into this Kli. Because he is extinguishing the, the sparks. He can't even do this mayor of Shabbos. Even if he places it before Shabbos. Needless to say, on Shabbos itself, that's Osir. So if our mission is discussing even Isra or Er Shabbos, that won't even fit with her Vyasis din. There must be a different reason for the Allah and our mission. Elamar of Ashi, I'll tell you the reason. I feel the Rabbanan, even if our mission is following, reflecting Shitas Rabbanan. Who allow one to do gram kibu and Shabbos? When we place those those uh, earthenware kalim around the fire, even they may burst when the fire gets to them. Our mission is re- reflecting even shitus rabbanon. So why in this case is it aser? Why can't he place the water in the kli? Shani yacha, this is different. Because he's he's bringing closer the time of kibu, meaning he he's he's preparing it for for a direct kibu. As Mefarshim explained, there's a concern that perhaps. He's going to put, while he's pouring the water in this Kli on Shabbos, the sparks will arrive. And it turns out that he's actually, actually actively extinguishing the sparks with his own hands, not just a gram kibui. Therefore, that would be a malacha. Or, for instance, if he's, if he's placing the Kli there on Shabbos and he's lifting it right under the, right under the nair, so at that point when the spark hits the water, he's actually being machabu with his own hands. So, on account of this concern, Chachamim disallowed this. They answered from putting the kli with water for concern that it might actually bring to kibui, direct kibui, which is the Mlachad Arais. Therefore, the Brayser tells us not only on Shabbos itself, even on Arab Shabbos, he cannot do so for concern that he might actually do it on Shabbos and then he might come to do direct kibui. This is Asakash. We don't find this type of this anywhere else. For instance, a person may set up a trap in Arab Shabbos to trap animals. There's no concern that he might do that on Shabbos itself. So why is this different? Said so he says there is a difference. Because by an ordinary malacha like the malacha of trapping, there's no reason, no basis to suspect that anybody's going to do the malacha of trapping on Shabbos. However, in this case, with the water and the kli, there is a concern because it doesn't really appear to the ordinary person like he's doing a malacha. He's merely placing water there, he's placing a kli there. It, it's not an obvious malacha. So there's a real concern that a person might not realize, and just as he does at Arab Shabbos, to extinguish those, those sparks that will fall into this water, he might do it on Shabbos it's, itself. And on Shabbos, there's a concern that while he's pouring the water, while he's placing the kli, it might take pl- the a direct kibui. A direct malach of kibui might take place. Now, Tesis points out so, how, how do we understand the, the common, common practice of placing water in a glass uh, container and having the oil float on top of it? Why is this different? When the flame gets to the water, 
it goes out, extinguishes by the wa- by, through the water. So he's doing the same thing as in the Mishnah. He's placing uh, water near a flame. It, it, it should be Asr. There's a concern perhaps that he might go ahead and do Kiba Biyadayim. So why is this allowed? So it tells us a big difference. Because in that case, he's not involving himself in, in extinguishing any, any sparks. The, he's merely trying to lift the oil. So he places a little water underneath. So the oil gets lifted and uh, goes to the top of the, of the Kli. And the flame is up on top. He'd like it to be that way. So the point here is not that he's doing any kibu. He's not involved in extinguishing any, any sparks, any flames. So indeed there's no concern here that will go ahead and do anything that relates to kibu. The Rush adds another point that factually speaking, there actually is no gram kibu at all. Because with or without the water, the flame lasts just as long. It's going to burn down to the bottom of, until it consumes the, the whole entire supply of oil. And that's it. So even if there's no water there, the flame goes out. So by placing water there, he's not actually expediting any kibbutz. He's not involved in doing any kibbutz whatsoever. There's no concern that on account of allowing him to do this, he might go ahead and place the kli there, as in the case of the Mishnah, and put out the sparks. One doesn't relate to the other. This is not a malacha, this is not a, a, a maisa of, uh, of gram kibbutz at all, and therefore it has no relation to the aloha now mission. Hadron aloha kira. Continues the Mishnah. Ba me what type of materials can one use to insulate, to wrap a pot? And what cannot be used for wrapping? Now until now we learned that Allah Shehiya, placing an item, having an, a, a pot, remain on a stove and an oven throughout Shabbos. Now we're going to discuss the Allah Atzmana. So one would like to take his warm pot and insulate it, cover it up, wrap it with some sort of uh, material to maintain its heat throughout Shabbos. Now, as we learned earlier in the Masechta, there are actually two categories of Atzmana. One is mi'ba'idyayim, and one is mi'shech ha'sheich. On Shabbos itself, mi'shech ha'sheich, one cannot wrap a pot with any type of material. Why? Because there's a concern that he might find his pot has already cooled off, and he might not be too happy about that, and go ahead and rewarm it on Shabbos. Therefore, the Chachamim prohibited one from being a matman on Shabbos itself. He can't take the warm pot and wrap it on Shabbos with any type of material. However, on air of Shabbos, that is allowed, provided that it uses materials which are not moist of hevel, which don't uh, generate, emit any heat. Why is that? Because if you were to use materials that are moist of hevel, there's a concern that it might use afer, ashes, which contain in them coals. And what's wrong with that? Because he might go ahead on Shabbos and stir those coals to generate some more heat and maintain the heat of his food. So therefore, this is going to be our Mishnah, which will give us the, the, the um, classification, the categories of what is considered to be moist of heaven and what not. But may I tell you, what can you, one use, what type of material can one use for Atmana on Erev Shabbos? These type of materials that are not moist of heaven. What type of materials are moist of heaven and cannot be used for Atmana? Says the Mishnah, ain't time and one cannot wrap with big gefes using this pulp of. Um, of something which was squeezed for its oil, the Gemara will explain, was speaking about the olives or sesame. Vilei bezevel manure, vilei bemelach salt, vilei besid, type of plaster. Vilei bechoril sand, bein lachem bein evasion. Whether these things are moist or wet, they are moist of hevel and cannot be used for atmon. Vilei betevem straw, vilei bezagin, pulp from uh, squeezed grapes. Vilei bemuchen some type of rags. Why she says any soft material like like rags or or. Uh, Cotton balls, etc. Vilei ba'azav and grass, bizman shein lacha. They're only there's only concern when they're moist. At that point, they're moist of hevel. Avot toyinu bem. One can use them kshem yivation when they're dry. Now Tzitzis points out, pirush arav yisei b'shem arav yishmuel, that this discussion of being matman bedover hamoist of hevel, which is aser, is only when this food is not considered to be machal ben dersoi. But if this food was cooked, machab and soy, which means a third cooked, just as shehiyah is allowed, one can place it over a stove with exposed coals, there's no concern of shamiyachata, because it's already somewhat edible here too. This shita will hold that one can wrap this food with this pot, even using material which is mice of hevel. Because what, what, again, what's the point of mice of hevel? Why is it also because he might use ashes and he might go and stir those coals? But if this food is already a third cooked, there's no concern that he'll go ahead and stir those coals to expedite the cook- cooking process. It's already edible, as is. Now, Rabbi Tam disagrees with it. He says there's a big difference between Hatmana, that we're discussing here, and Shehiyah. 
Shehia is allowed when the item is already at least a third cooked. It says around time why? Because Shehia is speaking about that the the pot is sitting up on the stove and it's up in the air, the air is affecting it, the cold air is affecting it, and therefore a little bit of stirring of the coals won't really help it out too much. Therefore there's no concern that will stir the coals. However, by Hatzmana where it's wrapped, and he's trying to maintain the heat through the wrapping. In this case, as a in time, a little bit stirring of the coals will, will enhance the, the heat there, will increase the heat, since the item is, is wrapped. So there is a real concern of Shem even when the food is ready third cooked. The Rosh adds another point, he says, that food which is left sitting on the stove, Shehiyah, is generally intended for the night meal. Therefore, there's another reason that, that we, another reason to mitigate the, the concern, that since it's going to be used soon for the meal, there's less reason to think that it's going to be mechat to stir the coals. But something which was wrapped, hatmana, evidently, he's intending on using it for tomorrow's meal. In that case, there's more of a reason of concern that he'll go ahead and stir the coals to maintain its heat for tomorrow. Okay, continues the Gemara. Iboilu, we have a question as far as definition. What does the Mishnah mean when it says gefes? Gefes, this type of pulp, is mice of hevel. Is it gefes shal zeisim tnam? Is the Mishnah listing uh, gefes of olives, of pressed olives? Or, avadu shum shemin But the, uh, the uh, pulp of, of crushed sesames are okay. So only the gefes shal zeisim which are rashes were piled up together and they they generate heat since they're kolos yachad gathered together v'chamoy very hot, but the shumshim that are gathered together don't generate so much heat. Oydilma the shumshim it none. The Mishnah is discussing shumshim and the crushed sesame. They too are considered to be an item which generates heat, a large degree of heat, and are considered to be myself hevel. The koshkin zeisim certainly the pulp of zeisim says the Gemara Tashma. I'll bring you the right. The Omer of Zeir Mishum Chad Rav Yana. Rav Zeir quoted in the name of one of the um, Chachamim in the base manager of Yana as follows: Kupa Shetoman Ba. For one wrapped his pot using permitted uh, material like, like rags, etc. So he placed it into a kupa, into a basket, into a box. Also la Nicha Al Gefesh Al Zesim. He cannot take this entire kupa, this entire contraption, and place it on top of the the Zesim pulp because the heat emanating from the zesim are affecting the temperature of the pot contained inside the skupa and therefore it has a status of hatmana bedavar hamoysef hevel and it's also says about the fact that he that he uh, relates to the gefes as gefes shal zesim apparently that's a raya to the definition of gefes in our mission as well shma me know we hear from here shal zesim tonight that the gefes described in our Mishnah is of the olives Says Mar no. Lo oilam emloch. Truthfully, I'll tell you. Lini atmana with regards to wrapping and insulating. The shum shimen ami aser. Even if he uses the pulp of shum shimen, that too is considered to be ma'is of hevel and it's aser. This case, this halacha, was describing a slightly different type of scenario. With describing a kupa which contains the pot within it, which was placed on top of the gefesh alzeisim. Now we need the the heat to radiate upwards. In that case, we say that. Only the Gefesh al has that ability. In order to radiate heat upwards, the Zaysim maski havla. Only pulp of, of olives are hot enough to do that. The Shum Shimin loy maski havla. Pulp of, of sesame don't have that ability to radiate upwards. So therefore, Rav Zeru quoted the halacha with regards to Gefesh al Because in that case, certainly, only the Gefesh al have the ability to heat up the pot which is in the kupa above the zesim. But with regard to ordinary atmana, as discussed in our Mishnah, perhaps, even the gefesh shal shum are considered to be of hevel, and it's considered to be a forbidden item. Okay, time for a brief chazara on today's daf. We began with halacha, that one may be metal to lay machta, that has ashes in it, more as a kasha, the ashes are mukta, they're utterly useless. The machta should be considered to be a basis, a base to these mukta, this mukta ash, and should be considered a mukta as well. It says Abaya, was speaking about there are granules in there. It says the more granules to Rebbe, insignificant. They carry no value. 
says Abaye okay, the reason is because of Graf Shorei, it's repulsive, and therefore he can move it even if it's Muktzah. Rabbi says, well, this is not really Graf Shorei, it's not really Mos, and it's also covered. It says Rabbi, I'll tell you the reason is because this afer, these ashes were prepared from yesterday to be used on Shabbos, and therefore they're not even Muktzah. We're speaking about there's some wood chips there, nevertheless since they're not as valuable as the afer, they are nullified and the machta is considered to be forming a bosses for the afer, which is, which is mutter. Then we proceeded with the halacha of assembling items that are comprised of sections and parts. The Gemara told us regarding a mita shatarsim, a, a weaver or a, a, a some say it's a, a copper smith's bed which is portable, it has many sections, and he puts it together in a loose manner, roughly. Is that mutter or asr? We have a Rav Shmuel says it's asr, and they base their shita on the brisa which tells us. The first brisa which tells us that even roughly is asr. According to Rabbi Abba and Rav Funa this case is mutter, and they base their opinion on Rav Shimon Gamliel, who holds that as long as the sections are merely loosely fitted together, it is mutter even with Rabbanon. Then we proceeded with two halachas with regards to a lap, one may place a clay underneath to be mekabal the nitzaytzeh, to deflect those sparks, as long as the clay doesn't have water in it. Otherwise it's also there's a concern that he might go ahead and do the malach of kiboy on Shabbos. The mission proceeded with the halach of atmana. So if he wants to be matman, wrap, insulate a pot before Shabbos, he may use materials that are not moist of hevel, but materials that add heat, that generate heat, that emit heat, that he cannot use because there's a concern that he might use afer which contains coals, and he might go ahead and stir those coals on Shabbos with machata b'gchol. Now there's a point that Taisus makes with regard to atmana, which may be pertinent to some of us today who use the crock pots on Shabbos. Taisus says that the concept of atmana is only when he is matmin umadbik saviv hakadera, when he actually places the insulation flush to the pot. However, if there's some aver, some some air, there's an air gap between the insulation and the pot that is not considered to be atmana, but rather it's merely considered to be shehiyah. So according to some shittas, the today's crockpot, which is uh, covered on all sides with the walls of the crockpot, so we have the container which contains the food inside and surrounded by this additional wall, this, uh, this aluminum metal wall surrounding it. So according to some shittas, is that considered to be atmana? So the best way to get around that is to create an air gap, an avir ben atmanais likadera. So it can simply be done by, by raising the container inside, placing some, uh, for instance, some balls of silver foil to raise the container, thereby creating a, a air gap, air space underneath and also around the sides of the container, which contain the food. So by doing so, he's distancing somewhat the outer walls of the crockpot from the actual container. And according to Toysus' words, that's not considered to be atmana, but davar hamaisif hevel.